Have you ever looked at a piece of artwork and thought, that's pretty cool, and moved on really quickly? I recently went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York to look at the various pieces that they had on, they had on exhibit. They ranged from sculptures from Greek and Roman times, to objects and mummies from ancient Egypt, and to Chinese scrolls and paintings written and drawn by Chinese scholars. Walking around the museum, I had said the phrase, that's pretty cool, many times, and moved on quickly to the next piece. I took brief, quick glances at the many pieces that they had because I wanted to get to each piece that was being displayed. There may be more underneath the surface of the artwork that you're looking at. Hello, my name is Nikki Zhang, and this is my senior talk, Deeper Than the Surface. When you look at a piece of art, have you ever wondered how that artist has come up with that piece? That question pops up in my head sometimes, too, when I'm looking at a piece of art. If I find a piece of art exciting, intriguing, or unique, I want to find more about it. That is how the human brain works. Human brains strive to learn more and to intake new information and experiences. Curiosity drives humans to create, explore, innovate, and learn various things. So when I see something that I deem interesting, I want to learn more about it. So, how do artists come up with their various pieces, and what are some steps that they take? Taken from an interview with Cindy Sherman, contemporary artist, she gives insight onto how she creates her pieces. Cindy describes her process as largely intuitive. She tests out ideas as they pop into her head and she plays around with garments and props until she hits on a promising character. This interview also mentions how she is the youngest of five children in her family, which explains why she likes dressing up to gain attention from her family members. So, how does this answer the how question? Many artists draw inspiration from different aspects of their environment. It can be, whether it be from their personal lives or just to convey a general message. And then they tie it into their creations that they make. Sometimes it can be completely intuitive. Here's an example from the realism movement. Realism artist Jean-Francois Millet painted the cleaners in 1857. This painting was meant to represent the rural working conditions in the 1800s. And, and the three women that are bent over picking out the wheat and grass represent the rural working class during that time. For my senior project over the summer, I had created various paintings and I managed to create three pieces. I had used different techniques and mediums throughout the process. My first painting is a pavilion on water with lily pads. I had drawn inspiration from Chinese pavilion buildings, from safari, and from when I visited temples in China. My second piece is a sunflower dot painting. I had used an image of a sunflower from safari as well, and I had used it to help create an outline and shape so that it would be easier for me to follow and create the shape of the sunflower. And my last piece, simple, but it's pretty cool, it's a simple line and shape painting. I had also included some dots. While creating this piece, my last one, I had no inspiration, but rather it was just based on my intuition. I used my intuition on where I thought lines would look the best, where the shapes would look the best, and where the dots I thought would fit. And what do I mean by looking underneath the surface of an artwork? Let's take a look at an art style called cubism. If you've heard of cubism, please raise your hand. So what is it? A general description of this art style would be objects made of various geometric shapes, and it may be hard to depict the object that a cubist artist may be trying to show through their drawings, if you're only looking briefly on the surface and not looking at the finer details. But by looking deeper and looking at more details, you can spot details that may indicate a part of an object or a scene that they're trying to show. When I first saw this painting shown on screen, called Mandora by George Brock, I didn't notice that there was a musical instrument lying in the center. At first, it just looked to me like it was a bunch of shapes smashed together. But after I looked more carefully at this painting, I could pick out the musical instrument in Mandora lying at the center. There are many other styles other than cubism. Some of them are neoclassicism with the painting of Oath of the Horati. There's romanticism with Wanderer Above the Sea and Impressionism with Sunrise, Post-Impressionism, Starry Night, and Contemporary Art called Untitled Film Film by Cindy Sherman. 
All of these are famous art styles and movements from different periods in history. Some styles are created from being movements against others. For example, realism was a movement against romanticism. All these, fam uh, all these famous art styles and movements have the who, what, when, where, and why aspect to them. And by going deeper than the surface of a piece of art from each era, you can see the rich history behind them. Let's take a look at a statistic from YouGov, which shows that 38% of US adult citizens are familiar or somewhat familiar with famous art movements and styles. Now let's talk a bit more about how there may be more beneath the surface in creative creations and how an artist named Pepon Osorio manages to create deeper meanings through his pieces. Pepon Osorio has created many profound and unique pieces of art. Some are more gory than others, like having ears on the bottom of barber chairs, but they all have some meaning behind them. He shares his past experiences or general messages that he wants the public to see. So let's take a look at one of his works, called Badge of Honor. This exhibit shows two rooms separated by a wall, one with a prison cell and one of a teenager's room. You can see a projected photo of a man in the cell and a boy in the lively room. The father and son duo have many conversations throughout this exhibit, which spark complicated emotions. And here's a video to give you more information. So here's one thing that the boy said to his father, which is taken from the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. Dad, I would be willing to give up anything just to have you home. It shows on the surface how a fatherly figure is separated from his son in jail. His room is bare with only the necessities of a prison, while his son has many memories and monuments from his teenager years and childhood. Emotions like tenderness, loss, and loneliness can be felt through this piece. It shows how beneath the surface of a how beneath the surface of this artwork, a human connection is severed by the wall and a father and son is separated by incarceration. And what may be considered a home may not just be a physical place, but it can be the people you love. So what is the takeaway of my talk? Art can depict many different scenes and emotions. Artists may create pieces from personal experiences or try to convey a general message to the public. Each person feels, sees, and thinks uniquely in their own mind. Here's a quote from an article from Artnet News. The average person spends just over 27 seconds looking at a great work of art. So the next time that you look at art, whether it's a painting, sculpture, object, photograph, etc., take an extended look at the art. You may see, feel, and think things that you would overlook if you only took a look at it briefly. As there may be more beneath the surface, then there may be more beneath the surface of the artwork that you're looking at. Thank you for listening to my senior talk, Deeper Than the Surface.